Iron is an important metal that plays a significant part in our lives. In the periodic table of elements, iron features uniquely. It's known as Fe in science which is derived from a Latin word. The word ferrum means iron. As we stated in the carbon video, and I believe you know that, the arrangement of the elements in the periodic table is based on atomic numbers. These are the number of protons in an atom's nucleus for that element. This atom is an iron one, with 26 protons, being at number 26 on the periodic table. Interestingly enough, iron makes up about 5% of what lies under our feet, making it the fourth most common element found within Earth's crust. Moreover, even Earth's core consists mainly of iron and nickel. Pure iron is silver-gray metal which is relatively soft, but when mixed with carbon and some other metals to form steel it becomes very hard and strong. One important property of iron is its magnetism. At room temperature, pure iron shows ferromagnetism because it can become a magnet itself to make permanent magnets. Have a look at the history of this notable and precious metal. Iron has been in use for about 3200 years. In those days, people discovered that iron ore could be made into tools and weapons. In fact, how did they do it when they did not know how to extract iron from its ore? They only used fragments of native iron found on Earth, which are called meteorites. It's worth noting that some of these meteorites were up to 90% pure iron. By and by, people learned how to extract iron from its ore. This was done by heating iron ore in special furnaces. These first smelting furnaces were very simple. They formed a vertical structure from clay or soil, they mixed charcoal with iron ore, and then fired it. Moreover, they also used hand bellows to blow air into the fire and elevate the temperature of the furnace, thus making it reach about 1200 degrees Celsius, which could not melt iron because its melting point is 1538 degrees Celsius, but it could make a spongy or semi-solid form of iron. Nevertheless, one problem with this early process called direct reduction was that it produced extremely impure iron containing many gas bubbles and slag particles. As such, blacksmiths had to repeatedly heat and batter unprocessed irons so as to rid them of their impurities, thereby making them usable for something else. However, how did iron become so important? Initially, it was found everywhere in the world as opposed to copper and tin which were needed for bronze making and were scarce. Furthermore, iron was harder and more durable compared to bronze and copper. This made possible for quality tools of agriculture production, strong weapons and sturdy structures with iron. Thus we have the Iron Age instead of the Bronze Age. Any civilization that could work with iron in ancient times was a superpower. The Hittites, who lived in Anatolia or modern Turkey, for instance, were one of the earliest societies to produce iron on a large scale. They used it to create an empire. To them having iron was like having a nuclear bomb. People throughout history learned how to make many different things from iron. What came first? Certainly swords and armor. Iron swords were much sharper than bronze ones, as well as much sturdier. After that followed agricultural implements such as sickles or plows, which revolutionized farming by improving food output. It was little by little that they discovered that when carbon was added to iron, steel was produced which is harder and more durable than the ordinary iron. When did they first make steel? Frankly speaking, we do not know exactly. But what we do know is that around 400 years before Christ blacksmiths in ancient India could produce high-quality steel, they made Wootz steel, a special type of it which was rather popular. The famous Damascus swords were made of this kind of steel, so sharp and strong that people all over the world knew about them. Looking at steel in scientific terms, it should be noted that steel actually is an alloy, a mixture with some elements remaining homogeneous within it, at least one of which must be a metal. Carbon content in case of steel varies from 0.2 to 2% usually. As for steel, the higher its carbon content is, the harder and at the same time more fragile it becomes. Therefore, there has to be a compromise between hardness and flexibility. In addition to carbon, other elements are also added to steel to give it various properties. For example, by introducing chromium and nickel, it becomes stainless. Molybdenum helps it remain strong at high temperatures, while vanadium makes its structure grainy. Steel properties significantly change depending on any of these particular elements contained in them. 
To produce steel, one first melts down the raw iron in a blast furnace. These tall structures are filled with iron ore, coke and limestone. The hot air is then forced into the mixture through the bottom which results into a burning of coke and an increase in temperature inside the furnace up to 1600 degrees Celsius or even more. At that temperature oxygen leaves iron ore and forms molten iron. To express this reaction chemically, it means iron oxide from iron ore reacts with carbon monoxide formed from burning coke, producing pure iron and carbon dioxide. Fluid iron produced at this stage is then moved to other furnaces for the removal of impurities and addition of carbon and other elements that provide the required steel. For instance, while adding chrome it results into stainless steel, which used in making pots knives, Let's progress to a significant era, the Industrial Revolution. Starting from the mid-18th century, this period saw a major change in how steel was made. The Bessemer system, created by a man named Henry Bessemer in 1856, assisted in mass production of cheaply priced steels. His technique entailed blowing hot air up through molten iron within a container. As a result, all foreign substances in the iron were burnt off hence leaving behind purer forms of steel. The introduction of Bessemer process process completely changed everything about production of steel. Before then, making steel was expensive and time-consuming. By using his new technology, tons of steels could be manufactured every hour thus decreasing its price as well as usefulness in industries and construction sites. Afterwards, alternative processes were developed. One of them was the Siemens Martin furnace capable of producing better steel, while the basic oxygen process increased its production rate more than Bessemer had. Consequently, these developments resulted in a sharp increase in steel output and its price reduction. What happened then? Steel became widely used in buildings, bridges, railroads and machinery. For instance, the Brooklyn Bridge built in New York City in 1883 was one of the earliest major structures to be constructed using steel. Also, Eiffel Tower which is 330 meters high, finished in 1889 was made entirely out of iron and steel. Even today most industries and buildings use this metal. From house construction to automotive manufacturing and home appliances, it is almost impossible to find a place without steel inside it. For example, an average car contains about 900 kilograms of steel. Almost all skyscrapers worldwide have been erected on a base of steel structures. China alone produced about 1 billion tons of steel in the year 2020, in excess of 50% of the worldwide total steel output. Right? India and Japan are next to China in terms of production capacity. Iron is created as a final product in stars via nuclear fusion. Once it reaches iron, a star cannot no longer sustain fusion because of lack of energy and begins to collapse on itself. Iron can be found easily in most places, but its price is not exorbitant. The current global market price for iron is $107 per ton. Nevertheless, if turned into steel, its price will increase by 10 to 20 times. The cost per ton for rebars stands at $1,500. What do you think? Where would technology go without steels? How can cars have such gear boxes or engines? Let us know your thoughts down below, and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe.